Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film named 13 Exorcisms. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The story begins with a Catholic family of four having dinner. The mother is busy taking care of the paralyzed brother, while the daughter named Laura has a lot on her mind. Her father asks her why she isn't eating, and she explains that her best friend invited her to a party tonight, so she hopes her parents will agree to let her out. Worried about their daughter's safety late at night, her mother flatly refuses the request. After returning to her room, Laura secretly takes out her phone, planning to meet her best friend at the square. She's feeling disappointed when her father enters the room to give her medicine and hopes she will understand that everything they do is for her own good. Once her parents leave, Laura secretly spits out the medicine, proving that she's not as obedient as her parents believe. She takes the keys and prepares to sneak out, but her brother discovers her. Instead of stopping her, he tells her to be careful when she goes out. Arriving at the square, Laura finds a gathering of young people celebrating Halloween. Soon, her best friend meets up with her, and before the party, she wants to give Laura a surprise. Following her lead, they go to a dilapidated apartment building, where boys are waiting for them. They are looking for excitement, so her best friend creates an opportunity for Laura. She is a bit nervous around the unfamiliar boys, but a boy takes the initiative and gives her a passionate tongue massage to calm her down. At this moment, another boy comes up with a sinister idea to play a spirit-summoning game in the house of a former serial killer. Legend has it that the psycho killer made his three daughters sit on the sofa and watch as he stabbed his wife multiple times and pulled out her internal organs. Afterward, he even played a lullaby to celebrate his victory. The psycho killer claimed to be possessed by a demon that forced him to kill. After the chilling story, Laura was persuaded to join the spirit summoning game. As they gather around and summon the spirits, Laura grows terrified, looking at the pictures on the floor. The next second, everyone hears Laura whistling like a chicken. They think she is joking, so her best friend lifts her hair, only to find Laura has vanished into thin air. The frightened friends search for her everywhere by tracing her hormone smell, and eventually, she leaps out from a dark corner into the boy's warm arms. In the end, Laura is sent back home. Feeling that Laura had been tainted by the outside world, her mother takes her to the bathroom to wash her dirty body. It turns out that Laura's family are devout believers. The next day, before going to the church for prayer, her mother takes her to the cemetery to mourn her deceased brother. However, Laura has an ominous premonition at the grave. When they arrive at the church, her mother asks her to confess. Laura enters the confessional to confess to the priest. But unexpectedly, the priest's voice sounds demonic. Startled, she opens the confessional door, only to find it empty. At that moment, she hears the familiar chicken whistle behind her. Gathering her courage, she goes to check and ends up fleeing the church in a panic, with her mother quickly chasing after her. Just then, they encounter the new priest, meaning there was no one in the confessional earlier. As they leave, the priest looks back at Laura, his eyes filled with unease and fear. Back home, Laura goes to her brother's bedside, and he starts to worry about her. The previous night, he had heard her talking to a man who claimed to be the psycho killer and said he would never leave Laura. The brother's words make her toss and turn, and suddenly a shadow flashes past the door. The familiar whistle sounds again, and it seems the legendary psycho killer is now haunting Laura. Feeling there is a ghost in the room, she gathers her courage to check under the bed. The next second, she is frightened by something behind her and screams like a chicken. The next day at school, Laura appears somewhat absent-minded. Suddenly, she feels a sharp pain and finds both her arms covered in demonic inscriptions. Overwhelmed, she rushes into the bathroom. As she cleans her wounds, the door next to her suddenly opens, and the eerie whistling sound approaches. Laura hides in the bathroom, shivering with fear and wetting her pants. Suddenly, the psycho killer reaches the door. She steps forward to lock it, and the sudden silence is a relief. Fortunately, the psycho killer did not break the door open. After making sure no one is around, Laura escapes as fast as a chicken riding a Tesla bike. During our class, Laura was constantly restless, and the classmates behind her kept whispering. In a daze, she even heard her best friend's mockery. When her male classmate went to the restroom, Laura secretly followed him. Upon being discovered, he unexpectedly teased Laura with his words. Laura was now seemingly possessed by a demon, and she embraced him from behind. Under the demon's control, she forcibly pried his mouth open, possibly to feed him some turds. When she walked out of the restroom, the classmates were all shocked. Laura was covered in blood and soon fainted. 
When Laura woke up again, the psychologist at her bedside tried to comfort her, claiming that everything was just her imagination. However, Laura believed it was all the work of a demon, but the psychologist thought she was talking nonsense. After some consolation, Laura could only try to accept it, but she was still scared, thinking that the demon would surely harm her. The psychologist told her she would be fine. Just then, her parents arrived at the school in time. The psychologist explained the situation to Laura's mother privately. Upon learning that her daughter had participated in a spirit summoning event, her mother became emotional. Worse still, Laura believed that a demon controlled her body. The psychologist's words were unacceptable to her mother. As the two argued, Laura, coughing up blood, fell under the bed. Her parents found her and sought medical help immediately. She was then sent to the hospital for a thorough examination. During the CT scan, Laura experienced significant discomfort. Numerous crosses bulged in her abdomen. In agony, she clenched her toes. After seeing the scan results, the doctor was astonished. He had never encountered such a patient before. The crosses couldn't be naturally expelled, and there was an additional perforation inside her body. The doctor believed that Laura must have swallowed these things herself. Given the current situation, he advised further observation. Laura's father wondered how she could have swallowed them without being injured. Later, Laura told her mother about the demon and said it would not leave her. Only then did her mother realize the problem. Upon returning home, Laura's mother immediately contacted the priest. After learning about Laura's situation, the priest was not overly surprised. He felt that something was wrong the last time he saw her and believed that Laura was possessed by a demon. Her father found this absurd, but the priest admitted that this was not the first time he had encountered such a situation. The only solution now was to apply for an exorcism from the Vatican. Her father forbade them from doing so, and the priest tried to persuade him. However, the father still found the bullshit unbelievable and ultimately rejected the priest's request. In an attempt to protect his daughter, the father could only stand by and watch helplessly. Her mother prayed constantly to God, but her father thought it was futile. However, with the current situation, they had no choice but to try anything. After relenting, the priest approached Laura's bedside and made the sign of the cross. Upon infusing the consecrated liquid into her body, Laura twisted and struggled on the bed, and soon, blood flowed from her body. Realizing something was wrong, her father immediately called for the doctor. However, the priest believed that Laura needed to be moved to a safe place. To save their daughter from the demon's grasp, the couple began preparing the room. Once everything was ready, they arranged for Laura's discharge from the hospital. Upon being brought home, the mother asked how many exorcisms would be required. The priest informed her that it would not exceed 13 times, as Laura's body couldn't withstand more. With everything prepared, the priest began the exorcism. He drew a cross in the air and recited scriptures. Under the continuous prayers, the demon began to torment Laura's body. As the demon roared, the house suddenly plunged into darkness. By the time everyone came to their senses, Laura had disappeared. Her father searched for her by the window with a flashlight, while the priest found no one in the room. When they reached the living room, the father finally found his possessed daughter. The priest continued the exorcism, and the scriptures caused the demon to weaken. The priest quickly bound it, but for everyone's safety, he did not allow the father to approach. Taking advantage of Laura's remaining consciousness, the priest urged her to drink holy water. But the cunning demon refused to submit and spat the water out. The priest continued the exorcism, but Laura had reached the brink of collapse. In the end, at her father's intervention, the priest terminated the exorcism. In order to purify Laura's soul, her father placed her in a bathtub, and the priest performed another exorcism. He pushed Laura into the water, hoping the holy water could cleanse her soul. After struggling for a while, Laura stopped moving. Just when her parents thought she had drowned, the demon once again took possession of her body. The failure did not make the priest give up. A new round of exorcism was initiated. Under the exorcism, the agitated demon caused objects in the house to tremble. As a result, the priest was caught off guard and was choked by the demon. Fortunately, everyone pulled him away in time, saving his shitty life. With the demon's disguise, Laura pretended to be pitiful in front of her parents, but this did not sway them. The demon launched a counterattack, but verbally. The priest still managed to suppress the demon. Unfortunately, Laura's body suffered significant injury as a result. To make matters worse, the demon used her brother's voice to confuse her father. After multiple exorcisms, Laura was battered severely. This was already the 11th exorcism, and if it continued, she would lose her life. However, if they didn't continue, Laura would face the same fate. 
Unable to bear the situation, her father ran out to drown his sorrows. As a result, a teacher found him, telling him that a male classmate had admitted to putting drugs in the drink, causing Laura to hallucinate. This makes the father doubt whether his daughter was really possessed by a demon. To save his daughter, the father chose to believe the teacher. Just as the priest was about to learn the demon's name, the police were rushing to Laura's house. Upon discovering the demon's name, the priest performed the final exorcism. However, due to police intervention, the priest did not complete the final exorcism. When the father returned home, Laura was at her last breath. Unable to endure the demon's torment, she chose to jump from the building and end her life after saying goodbye to her father. Because of that, this exorcism ended in tragedy, and the final scene hints that Laura was indeed possessed by the demon. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.